Hello there, and welcome to another week of Whistle Watch. Hey, I'm up here. Now, to the best of my knowledge, none of these cows talk. Not yet. Another game-changing knock-on. Finn Russell goes in with one hand. I'm not sure if Roy Keane would listen to whatever I had to say. Ah, yes. Well done, Nigel. But let's start with your Emirates fans' questions. And we've had a video sent in from Devin Toner and Fergus McFadden. Hi Nigel, how's things? Hope you're well. Uh, I'm just wondering what your go-to breakfast is the morning of a match. Right then, Devin, I probably don't eat as much as you do, uh, but my favourite breakfast is, a pre-match breakfast, is a fried egg sandwich. Uh, because when I started refereeing when I was 16, my mum used to make me a fried egg sandwich every morning uh, of, of a game on a Saturday morning. So, still kept the tradition going, fried egg sandwich, but with red sauce. Hi Nigel, how's it going? Uh, I'd love to know what your favourite movie is. You probably haven't seen it, or maybe you have. It's Twin Town. It's a comedy uh, film, a film in Swansea. It is absolutely brilliant. Right then, let's get into your Emirates fans' questions and keep them coming in. Given a choice to try and deal with the anger of Eben Etzbeth or Roy Keane, who would you choose and why? Etzbeth, for sure. When a referee speaks to a rugby player, they listen. I'm not sure if Roy Keane would listen to whatever I had to say. So, Ed Speth, I believe, would be much easier to deal with than Roy Keane. This is a good one from uh, Epic Euphonium. I hope I pronounced your surname right there, Epic. What do you think of the new referee's kit? It's quite nice, actually, I've got to say. But i tell you one thing, I'm glad I'm still refereeing because those type of kits are quite tight-fitting. So they are for the athletes. I think they'll be showing a bit of my little belly in them. Who is your top pick to win the Six Nations? Well, now then, um, Dian, I have been correct with all my predictions so far. And I said at the beginning of the tournament, France. And that hasn't changed my mind at all, particularly the way France played against a very, very good Irish side on the weekend. So it's still France for me. But will it be a Grand Slam year? I'm not quite sure. What was your hardest decision? Retiring from refereeing. That was my hardest decision. What was your most favorite moment as a referee? Oh, the one that stands out is the World Cup final, I think. That, that is the big moment in anybody's refereeing career. Um, and not just the actual the occasion of refereeing it and the privilege of refereeing it, but also what it meant to my family and friends of the community back here in Manikerig and Ponte Beren, like, you know. It was something special. So that would be, when I look back, one of my, one of my proudest and, and favourite moments. Now, World Rugby recently posted this clip of Ben O'Keefe doing the fitness test. You telling me Nigel Owens was still passing this when he retired? Why well, did my last fitness test going into the World Cup in Japan in 2019? And yes, I passed it. If I'm honest with you, the best referees are not always the fittest ones. The best referees are the ones who are fit enough to referee the game and know what they're doing when they get there. So you can be as fit as you want, but if you're gonna get there and don't know what to do, there's not much point you being fit, is there? Well, it was another scintillating weekend in the Six Nations and I was fortunate enough to be at the Principality Stadium with a choir and the crowd who are in full voice. It really was spine-tingling stuff. Another week, another game-changing knock-on. Again involving Scotland, Finn Russell goes in with one hand. If he's in a realistic position to try to regather that ball, which means he went in with his hand, he nearly got it but didn't, then you would deem that as a genuine attempt to intercept, it would be just a knock-on. If you go with one hand, it doesn't mean that it's a deliberate knock-on. What the referees will decide is, was that one hand giving you an opportunity, a realistic opportunity, to regather the ball? If so, then one hand is fine. But in this instant here, it clearly looks like Finn Russell was never in a realist position to regather that ball, which means they got to the decision of a deliberate knock-on. Now, some of you have been asking the question, 
But what about him bumping into the Welsh player? Did that stop him getting at the ball? That is a fair point, but I think you've got to look at the first offence, which is actually that action by Finn Russell. The fact he bumped into a Welsh player then afterwards means he was not in a realistic position to catch the ball, which means the Welsh player did not commit any offence. So you go back to the scenario which the referees looked at on the day and decide that it is a deliberate knock-on. And in that situation on the field, in an attacking position like that, yellow card, but no penalty try. Another talking point in the Wales Scotland game was the Basham tackle towards the end. Was it illegal or not? Was it foul play? Well, the officials looked at it and decided it was foul play. And I have to say that I agree with them because I felt Basham's hand was down here and there was contact with the shoulder. The key thing here is this. When you have shoulder or contact to the head with foul play, part of the equation, which it was, then you're pretty much automatically starting at a red card. But the key thing is here, the contact is on the arm or body of the Scottish player. When it then makes contact with the head, it's not with a high degree of force, which means the officials then come down from a red to a yellow. To be honest, I was quite surprised it was a yellow card. I was expecting that type of action to be a yellow card. And another note as well, huge congratulations to Dan Bigger and John Fox Davis on a very well-deserved 100th cap. And what a way to celebrate. So, in the French game, we saw a very interesting one. Can the player actually hold himself up over the goal line? Well, yes, a try is only awarded if the ball actually touches the ground or the try line itself. If the player carrying it is on his back and the ball is on his arm and it's not touching the ground, it means he hasn't grounded the ball, so no try. This is a very interesting one in the England game for a couple of reasons. They were certainly blocking in the line So what that means is when you catch the ball in the line and you come down, you can't put your own players in front of that ball catcher to block, which means you're preventing the defending side from actually defending that ball, or trying to tackle and get the ball carrier to ground. So that is a penalty offence. In this instance, in the it Italian game, England do this, then they go up to score. The try is awarded, but the TMO comes in and they check it. And quite rightly so, they disallow the try because there is blocking or what we call double banking in the lineup. The only point for me here is, I think as a team of officials, you need to make this decision on the field. I am not a big fan of the TMO coming in and looking at, looking at instances like this, but I have to say, the outcome was correct. Right, over to the other overball game. Now, on the weekend, it was the Super Bowl final where the Rams beat the Bengals. In their honour, World Rugby have sent me an NFL-themed game. Okay, Nigel, you are going to be given a list of NFL teams. You then have to match the rugby union teams with the same name. Chicago Bears, um, Bristol Bears, Detroit Lions, uh, South Africa Golden Lions, are they? Well, they're the Emirates Lions now. The Emirates Lions, right? I have a mark for that. Kansas City Chiefs, uh, that would be the Chiefs in New Zealand. Pittsburgh Steelers, King Cross Steelers in London. Are they a rugby team? Oh, Japanese team. Um, uh, Kobe Steelers, yes, when training there when I was out in Japan refereeing. Damn, I should have known that. New Orleans Saints, Northampton Saints. The Atlanta Falcons. Oh, Newcastle Falcons. The Baltimore Ravens. Bridgend Ravens, is it? In Wales here. Ah, yes. Well done, Nigel. Well, I did okay, but very much like my school report, should have done better. Let me know how you get on. Well, there we are. Another week of Whistle Watch done. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and more importantly, I hope you agreed with me. Because remember, the referee is always right, even when he's wrong. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.